Today I want to talk about why I stopped shooting my videos in 24p and change it to 30p. Let's get into it. So my inspiration happened because I was always shooting 4K at 24 and I was still felt like there was something wrong, there was something blurry. Maybe I was over color grading them but then I stopped doing the color grading stuff and it still had this chunky look to it and my brain couldn't comprehend what was wrong here. There was something that was making things look mushy and I realized it was 24p. So I started experimenting. Here's a few things that I've noticed. So the first thing I notice is that the flickering in any lights is gone because the, the frequency, the hertz of electricity here in the States is 60 hertz. So that 30 will always be in sync with frequency of electricity. So no more flickering. Back in the day, film used to be shot at 24 frames per second with 180 degree shutter speed which translate to 1 over 48 of a second, which is half of the shutter speed. Flash forward to the future with mirrorless cameras, we are shooting at 23,976, but the shutter speeds aren't variable down to that 1 48th. So you have that little bit of difference between 1 48th and 1 50. So there's this a little bit of interruption of that shutter speed, that motion blur is just a little bit off. So it's just a little bit imperfect. Then when you put that into a timeline, there's a few variables that happen with a frame rate that create new frames here and there depending on the situation. So right off the bat, what this does is it's creating new stuff later on almost every single time. And there's not much you can do about it. It's up to the software, up to your computer, up to where you upload it. It's just not pure where 30 frames, you shoot it at 30, and you have a shutter speed of one over 60, you put it in a timeline, it's not creating any iframes, no weird compression things with H.264. Then when you upload it, it's going to upload exactly as is. So just in a technical standpoint for the frame rate and the shutter speed, 30 frames is optimal. And with that, I'm going to quote on YouTube saying it's reprocessed as 23.976, but will not reprocess 30 frames per second. Resampling techniques, since they can cause images to shutter and often result in lower quality video. So one day I was looking back on 24 frames per second footage and I noticed that the things that were moving just had this stuttery effect. And that's what 24 frames is. It's only 24 frames per second. And just those few frames more would have made it smoother. And I thought maybe, oh, this was a motion blur issue, so if you crank up the shutter speed so this less motion blur, that would fix it, but it's still only 24 frames per second, but they're crisper. Now when it comes to 30 frames per second, there's 30 frames in that second, and it, again, it just looks just cleaner, there's more information, it's buttery smooth, and it's just prettier looking, it's nicer to the eye, it doesn't feel like something's wrong. So with that being said, anytime something's moving in frame should just look a little bit better. It should look a little bit more real and a little more pleasing and relaxing, which in a sense is all of video. Video is motion, that's the point. This also applies when the camera is moving itself. So if anything is moving in the camera, it would look a little bit smoother. So will the camera move against something that's static. It works both ways. So I feel like 30 frames per second really is much better for YouTubers in general, where a lot of times one man show, two, maybe even three at the most. And the reason I say that is because not all of us have access to, own, or carry around big budget equipment. And it just doesn't make sense day to day. Now 30 frames per second will give you some play in the footage. So if you are walking around with a vlogging kit and there is more motion, it's less upsetting to the viewer. Because those few frames make things just look a little bit smoother, the viewer is not going to feel like their stomach is churning. And if you don't have a gimbal and you're walking or you're just moving around the camera or you walk into a shop, it's just going to look smoother and less stomach churning in 30 frames per second. When I got into video, 30 was just this tacky looking thing. It looked too real where you wanted that 24 frames per second just looked so cinematic and awesome. Well, things have evolved and 24 frames is pretty much on every camera and so is 30. So we kind of got to look at things a little bit more objectively. And yes, 30 frames does feel more real. And I feel like on YouTube, 
30 frames is what you should be doing because it should feel more real. We want more of that in your house, talking to you. It's a personality thing. We don't want to disconnect from the audience. 30 frames per second is a little bit closer to the audience. You see those little nuances, maybe it's just a twitch in the eye or a blink or whatever, and you do feel like you're really there, and it does feel more real, and so does the person. So I think that reality is a huge, huge step up where it used to be kind of a, a bad thing. I think it's a great thing. Now, I'm not a PC gamer myself, but I have had some powerful computers and have played some PC games. And when I install them, initially there's a default setting. And it looks similar to, say, like what PlayStation would have. And if you go in, you have a good graphics card and a good monitor, you can dial up these settings to a faster frame rate and they like some refresh rate as well. And you can really max it out. And the difference of feel between a very, very nice refresh rate and a higher fr uh, frames per second is just night and day. And once you see it and once you have it, you can't turn back. It's really, really difficult to drop some frames and you know, this is kind of what I look at now. So I've been watching my 30 frames per second so much in editing and stuff. When I see 24 frames per second now, I'm like, ugh, like it feels bad, it feels less than. And because it literally is less than, especially in this technical way, but on an emotional way, it feels less than as well. Now let's talk about motion blur. Now I've cranked up for this case as an example that we're still at 30 frames per second, but the motion blur isn't there because I've cranked up the shutter speed. I want to point out that the shutter speed is just so important of how it looks as well and how it feels. And this can be very tiresome for the viewer. It's just too much, it's too sharp. And then, like my example before with the completely perfect shutter speed to the frame rate for the six, shooting at 30 frames per second and the one over 60 versus 1 50th should be 1 48. The motion blur is just going to be slightly wrong on DSLRs versus actual film cameras. Now it's not going to be huge, but if you keep looking at it and you look at examples, you'll notice it after a while. Now I know some people won't ever give up 24 frames because they think it's cinematic. And that's a valid argument, you still want to keep cinematic. But here's a little news bomb for you. 24 frames per second isn't the thing that makes things cinematic. There's many other factors at play. It's really about the vision, the creator, the lighting, the production, the acting, everything, the delivery. It's not really the 24 frames per second. I've seen more cinematic videos in 30 frames per second than 24 that just was lacking in so many other things. It's you that makes things cinematic, not 24 frames per second. Nobel Prize winner of psychology, Daniel Kahneman, talks about how there's optical illusions as well as cognitive. Now, a good example of a cognitive illusion is when you look at a clock, remember back in school, and you look at the thing, you're waiting for the class to end, and that second hand just takes forever, and then it goes, and then it goes normal. And the reason that that happens is your brain interprets new data and it creates a new timeline. Time is, re is relevant, right? So when it looks to point B, it's taking the amount of time A to B and it's filling it in backwards with point B. So what happens is that time takes a second longer than actually a second because your brain is processing in reverse. So if you take 24 frames, which is less frames, it's just a slight a bit amount of work that your brain is processing the in-betweens. So if you take 30 frames a second, that's just a little bit less processing. What happens because of this is it's a little less fatiguing on a viewer to watch 30 frames per second because the brain doesn't have to skip around, but because things don't feel as long. A 24 frames per second video, in theory, should feel longer than a 30 frames per second. Now in the YouTube world, this matters, attention matters, and 24 frames per second is stealing that attention. It's making people a little bit bored. That's why these great cinematic videos that you may or may, may have made, and that I've made in the past, you think are gonna be bangers. People don't care, they click off. You see that, that click off chart, and you're just like, what is going on? This thing is awesome. Well, there's a little bit more to it, and possibly this is one of the factors. As humans, we're wired to notice things that move. 
This is where our attention goes. I'm sure you've had it happen where you're at a restaurant or a bar and you're talking to your friend, they're saying something interesting, but there's a TV behind them and it's just flickering and you keep looking at it. You can't help it, but you look at that and you're even talking to the TV. You're trying, you're making a conscious effort to be polite and not look at the blinding, flickering candy. Oh my God, it's so good. Uh, it's just because we're wired to notice these things. And if you think about this, and this is reaching, I know it's reaching a little bit, but I truly believe it, that 24 frames per second is slower motion. It's less attention getting than 30 frames. Now there can be too much as well, like 60 frames per second, like that Hobbit, 48 frames. I think that's too much, but the happy balance, I feel like is the 30 frames per second. Not like 24 is bad, but I think 30 is better. So there is something to be said about the tech YouTubers like MKBHD and their videos just look so crispy and all their B-roll looks so nice and just sharp. And it isn't just the fact that they have red cameras and everything like that. It has to do with the fact that they are shooting 30 frames per second. And when they are panning across the product, there is more frames. And in a sense, it's like high resolution, but in time, not just X and Y. And I think that really adds up. So all of these reasons combined with those little, little markups, markup here, markup there, really, really adds to a more technical, higher resolution video. And everything seems to cooperate in 30 frames per second better than 24 frames per second. One thing that doesn't matter too much, and I think it depends on preference, but it is worth noting is that when you shoot 120 frames per second for slow motion, if you cut that in half, that works perfectly. It gets divided into 30 by four, 24 to five. And that does matter of how much you split it up and how many frames are interpolated by your computer. And I personally like slow motion at half the rate or a quarter. And these weird divide by fifths ratio of slow motion tends to not look as good to me, especially with the weird interpolation, whether it's optical flow, motion blending, frame blending, whatever the technique that the GPU is going to use, it just doesn't look as good as a true frame spread out and interpreted correctly by the timeline. So 24 frames per second is pretty key for a lot of things cinematic with movies and stories and TV shows and all that. And I think that 30 frames should be reserved for news, talking head, YouTube, everything. And the reason that is is because with YouTube, stories are told to the camera and movies they are shown to the viewer and that bit distinction is where i think that you should decide 24 frames per second when it's shown 30 frames per second when it's told so if you like this video like subscribe all that comment below what you think of 30 frames per second versus 24 what do you like better what do you use are you willing to switch all that quick side note if you're more interested in this hertz frequency electricity thing i recommend a video by this creator great creator philip p7 pc and his video really breaks it down and that's where i learned that particular thing from so i recommend watching his video as well till next time cheers